Well, I want to welcome everybody here to the groundbreaking ceremony for our Phase 1 Children's Hospital. How about a round of applause? I see somebody over here streaming live, so I'm going to try not to screw this up. Um, <clears throat> so as you are aware, there was once a time that people called this city the dirtiest city in the country back in the 60s. Now it's the number one outdoor city. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing for pediatrics. Yeah. Today Chattanooga is taking a big step forward trying to match the level of clinical care we have with our outstanding doctors and our nurses and matching it with the facilities that, uh, that meet that same need. So today we're on that journey, and I have a, uh, a man that's been on a journey with Erlanger for more than 21 years that I'd like to invite to the podium. Uh, Olin, many of you know, uh, re actually retired May 31st. We brought him back out of retirement. Uh, he has uh, been with our pastoral care program for 21 years. He's done a great job, and we thought there would be nobody else that could actually uh, do this invocation today. Olin. So let us pray. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We are open to your presence, gathered under the canopy of your heavens, beside a life-giving river, surrounded by mountains from whence comes our help. Signal, look out and beyond. We're even beside our hospital called Erlanger, holding life and health for any in need. Our sense of awe stirs and moves our soul, and we give you thanks. So we gather around the opening of your sacred earth, a hole in the ground, hands to the shovel, breaking open the sacred way your presence abides within each of us in the passion and compassion of our heart, which gives us vision for the stewardship of our gifts and abilities to offer healing and health for our community, in our hands, in our heart, in our souls. You lead and guide making us co-laborers for our living, stewards of all that has been given to us. So in your care, let us break open the sacred earth and our calling to make a sacred place for health, healing, and hope for our children. From Woodmore Community to Lookout Mountain, from downtown and Brainerd to Appison, from Ultawa to Hickson, from the city to the country and beyond the mountains and the rivers where life force can reach any in need, let it be so for our children, our parents and grandparents, and families who abide daily in need. Stone upon stone, brick upon brick, metal upon metal, hands and heart that plan and have vision for healing, hands and heart that design and build, hands and heart that hold our children with knowledge and skill of medicine, hands and heart that hold with compassion and love. Let it come to pass in the fullness of time a beacon of hope. And so let us break open all of this with faith, hope, and love, and let us all say, Amen. Thank you very much for coming out of retirement, Owen. It is now my great honor as an Eagle Scout to welcome the Cherokee County Council Color Guard. Uh, they're going to present the colors. They're going to be followed by the Chattanooga Boy, Boys uh, Choir. I'd ask everyone to stand and remain standing as we present the colors and sing the national anthem. Oh, 
Go ahead and be seated. I feel like a preacher when I say be seated. <laughs> well, some of you may know, four years ago, this community was blessed when Kevin Spiegel came and became a part of this community. At that time, Erlanger was not doing the best financially. Um, Kevin, you, at a time when things were not going well, had the vision and the courage to stand up and say, we need a children's hospital in this community. And for that, I thank you. Kevin, it was under your leadership and in, partner with, in partnership with the great doctors and nurses we have that your vision is now becoming a reality. Uh, you increased revenue by more than 50% over these years, um, and without that, we would not even be able to have this conversation about a children's hospital, and yet today we're breaking ground. So Kevin, thank you on behalf of our community, and with that, I introduce you to our president and CEO, Kevin Spiegel. Don, thank you very much. I want to personally thank everybody here who came out today to support the children of this community. And that's why we're here. That's why everybody is here. It's to support the children in this community that we live in and we love. And you're going to get to hear from some miracle children later. But it's about the kids and how much we value both education and the children in our community that we need to step up our game to build an infrastructure for this community. At this point, I want to uh, personally recognize all the public officials who showed their personal support for this project. Could you please stand and be recognized? Without your personal support, none of this would go on. At this point, I would like to recognize the Erlanger Health System Board of Trustees. Would you please stand to be recognized? It is with their counsel and guidance that really brought this day to a reality making trips to Wall Street with us and talking about how do we actually make this project a reality, I personally thank you. I want to talk a little bit about a vision that I had um, when I came here over four years ago. Actually walked through, did a tour of the hospital um, with Dr. Alan Court, our chairman of pediatrics. And we talked about that this was about 40 year old hospital and infrastructure. To some it was new, but as you compared it to the mean age of children's hospital across the United States, which is six years, and you realize that our infrastructure was way outdated in compared to the rest of this country. And we truly did need to step up our game. But it was at a time where we were not financially sound. I remember when I was with Donnie Hutchison in my office, and he looked at me with these eyes that only Donnie could do. And he says, like, you want to start planning and building a hospital when we couldn't take two nickels and rub them together. And there was not a history of philanthropy to support a children's hospital in this community. But I did believe that number one, we were going to come through this financial issue, and number two, that if we didn't start today, we would never get there four years ago. And that's what took courage and belief and understanding, and we did get through our financial blip, and we did plan and recruit talent to this community and region that is second to none. I get to work with the best doctors and nurses and administrators in the country. They inspire me every single day.
We are so blessed. This region re does reserve something more than just an old 40-year-old building, and we started a plan to build a new children's hospital. Anybody that gave a dollar believes in the plan, and you need to realize that it's because of you that this day actually happened. It's everybody came in and gave small gifts. All of the employees, I don't know, Don, what percentage, but of our doctors and nurses and average and housekeepers, everybody gave a piece of their paycheck. Our board of directors, our legislators, everybody stepped up and they all contributed to make this a reality. We are breaking ground. We are making it a reality. We still have more to do. So the real challenge in this message is we are moving this project forward. Um, Britt is, is a little tacky right now because he understands the financials. Um, but we are moving forward and I do believe that we're gonna come through and finish this project under budget, on time, and start working on other phases of modernization for the entire Erlanger health system. Kim White is going to hopefully talk a little bit more about the Third Street Development Project, but this is the beginning of the Third Street Development Project, that we will see a whole medical corridor right down of research along with the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Dr. Engel, Chancellor Engel, and we're going to build bridges both together as partners and physical bridges so we can connect one of the world's greatest colleges and universities in the country with one of the best academic medical centers in this country. So we're really excited about that. I do believe that as you look at great hospitals, and Bruce Kaminsky, before coming to Chattanooga, finished the Ann Laurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. It's the tallest, most modern children's hospital in the United States. And with that and the close alignment with the University of Chicago next door to it, it now is, is up in the top 10 performing hospital, children's hospitals in the world. And that's what I really believe that's gonna happen here, is we're gonna start, and pediatrics is gonna be our signature department. But we do believe, and we do believe in you, we do believe in our children, and we do believe in this community. Again, I wanna personally thank you, I wanna thank everybody for their donation, keep it coming because we need to realize the in total vision. Thank you so much and have a great day. Well, it would be impossible for me to thank each one of you individually for being here today because I'd forget somebody and I'd get in a lot of trouble. So what I'd like to do is thank you all for your leadership, for your financial support, and all the other types of support you've given these children and this project uh, over the last two and a half years. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank some folks uh, individually. I want to thank our Miracle Children. If you could please stand up, our E-Children, and actually all of our children. If you guys could stand up. This hospital is for you guys. That's why we're here. Um, I'd like to thank the Erlanger and Children's Hospital Council. If you guys could please stand. Our partners who are going to bring this building out of the ground, HKS and McCarthy, led by Project Executive Bruce Kaminsky. You guys could please stand. The Groundbreaking Committee and the Erlanger Health System Foundation staff. You guys could please stand. <laughs> Our academic partners at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I've seen some of you in the audience, so please stand. And now a very special group. I'd like to ask all of the doctors and nurses and the administrators who work at the Children's Hospital to please stand.
Wait, 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 wait. Remain, remain standing. Remain standing. Now I want everybody that works at the Erlanger system to please stand up. Thank you. Now you guys sit down. I'd also like to thank our friends from our, uh, our partner at Vanderbilt. If you guys could please stand. You medical providers make this happen each and every day for our kids. Um, so thank you. So I have a friend, his name is Joe Rogers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and Joe is the chairman of the board for Waffle House. So you guys say, he knows the guy from Waffle House. I know the guy from Waffle House. So Joe has a leadership principle, and he says sometimes you just show up. And showing up is part of leadership. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know why you came, you just show up. So I met a man shortly after that tragic bus accident, <clears throat> November 23rd, it was Butch Jones. So Butch Jones, thank you for showing up today. <clears throat> Which I'm asking you to stand for just one more second. You showed up, you showed leadership. There was no reason for you to come here from Knoxville when that accident took place. You brought your players and you helped our families. Thank you. I'd now uh, like to introduce someone who's become a good friend, uh, Congressman, Ch uh, U.S. Congressman Chuck Fleshman. He represents the 3rd District. For 24 years, Chuck and his wife ran a small business together here in Chattanooga. They're both graduates from the law school at the University of Tennessee. Uh, if you are real nice to me, I'll get you a signature or something from <laughs> Coach Jones. <laughs> Congressman uh, Fleshman currently serves on the Appropriation uh, Committee and three very important subcommittees, uh, Energy, Water Development and Related Agencies, Homeland Security, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and Related Agencies. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce U.S. Congressman Chuck Fleshman. What a special day for Chattanooga, for Tennessee, for Erlanger. To each and every one of you all who are here, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Erlanger has always been a very special place to me. My three children were born here. Uh, my wife has been treated here over the years. But when I came to Congress about seven years ago, and then I had the opportunity to meet Kevin Spiegel and his team, he told me there were needs at Erlanger that were not being met. And I want each and every one of you all to know how important it was that Kevin and his team came to Senator Corker and to me to ask that we get into the federal pool. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, other public hospitals around the state were actually getting federal funding that Erlanger was not getting. And it was hurt, hurting Erlanger, it was hurting the bottom line. We came together as a team. And Mayor, our local leaders, uh, we work so well together. I want everyone to know this, whether it's at the local level, the state level, or the federal level. I know of no other community that comes together to get things done. But for all the causes that I've worked on in the past seven years, when I think that a children's hospital, a world-class children's hospital with miracle children, is coming into fruition right here in the greatest mid-sized city of America, Ladies and gentlemen, you all deserve a tremendous round of applause because we have really gotten something special done. Now I'm going to be leaving momentarily to catch a plane to go back to that crazy city on the hill, Washington. But let me leave you all with this one thought. A reporter a few years ago came up to me and he said, how come you're so happy? How come you're so optimistic? And I stopped and I said, listen, there's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be skeptics. There's always going to be pessimists. But I represent the greatest people in the world, the people of the 3rd District of Tennessee. And the Erlanger team is a big part of it. So thank each and every one of you all for inspiring me so that I can get up every day and do that job for you all. God bless each and every one of you all. God bless the great state of Tennessee. God bless the University of Tennessee. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Congressman Fleshman, for joining us this morning. Uh, and thank you for all you're doing in D.C. 
Um, with that, I'd like to um, introduce a, a very special man um, as mayor, as um, Hamilton County Mayor for the last six years, uh, Mayor Coppinger has been actively involved in economic developments. Um, he and his administration have assisted with securing new companies like Volkswagen, Alstom, Getzhamp, and Amazon, while working with existing companies such as McKee Foods, Komatsu, and Chatham as he underwent major expansions. Uh, he has also played a vital role in securing the future for Erlanger. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank Hamilton County Mayor Jim Coppinger for his support and welcome you up here. Well, good afternoon, or still good morning, right? My bad. Uh, and thank you, Don, for that introduction, and I, I need to straighten the record out. I wish I'd been responsible solely for all of those things, but it take a, takes a great team of people to do that, and the federal government was involved, and the state was heavily involved in all the recruitment, and certainly our local people, and I want to say that I'm joined here today with uh, County Commissioner Joe Graham and County Commissioner uh, Tim Boyd, and uh, also former County Commissioner that went on to uh, something better in, in Larry Henry and certainly our sheriff uh, uh, again somebody that utilizes the Erlanger facilities quite a bit as you can imagine uh, with the inmates but we're here to talk about something much more pleasant today uh, you know it truly is when you look at what Erlanger Hospital has been able to accomplish under uh, the leadership of uh, Kevin Spiegel and the board uh, you know I have the privilege of appointing to the board uh, five of its members and and so proud of the, the work that they do, and you'll hear from one of them here in a minute, Tom Ed. But, but again, uh, for the Commission's confidence in those appointments to approve and confirm those appointments, and why is it important? It's because of projects like this that uh, uh, they, get the, they gather the support that they need in the community. You know, uh, the tragedy that occurred with the Woodmore Elementary in, in our public schools uh, was something that, that, that all of us will remember forever. But for many of us that had the opportunity to come down here and witness uh, during the activity and, and even uh, after the days to come and to see the tremendous work of all of the uh, emergency workers in the uh, ER and the physicians, uh, it was phenomenal. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a lot of people forget that Erlanger is a public hospital and it is the best public hospital in this country. So I want to applaud and join me in applauding all of the workers that, uh, that work there. Uh, and lastly, I want to say, because I'd be remiss not to do this since they were talking about the economic development side of it, you know, the most important uh, piece of what we're uh, discussing here today are really how lives are going to be changed uh, by the services that are going to be provided by this children's hospital that's long overdue. Uh, but again, to the community, it's, it's, a, it's a $40 million investment and about 250 employees that are going to work here, uh, saving lives and enhancing the quality of lives and making this community something that's really um, proud of. And I say that because I want to uh, publicly say with the help of the commission, because the county owns a parking lot over here and the health department over here, and we're going to try to get out of the way as the third street corridor uh, takes place because we think it's really important for the advancement and the movement of uh, Hamilton County and Chattanooga. So I hope as uh, we see these changes, we all can come together and, and, and support uh, doing that as we move forward. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you much, very, thank you very much, Mayor Coppinger. Uh, it's now my great honor to introduce somebody I first met when I came to town. I actually met her when I was interviewing and she told me about this project and that we had to raise uh, enough money to partner with Erlanger and build this $40 million um, building. Um, and we weren't very far along. Um, Julie Taylor uh, has given us the energy and the enthusiasm when we weren't sure what was going to happen. She always has believed she's got deep roots in this, in deep, deep roots in this community and it's, her, it's with her leadership that we got to where we are today. So with that I'd like to introduce Julie. Don, that was very special. And thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, what an incredible day. Um, so in January of 2016, we launched the Believe Campaign, which is a $40 million effort to build a new children's hospital. And in less than two years, we have secured over $32 million towards that goal. So we are here today to break some ground.
One of the best decisions Kevin Spiegel made early on was to hire Bruce Comiskey to lead the project. And as most of you know, Bruce is known for building children's hospitals all over the world. He is our inspiration for creating a place that's not only iconic to this region, but also provides a healing environment that allows kids to forget why they're here. So to help make that happen, many of our cultural organizations stepped up and donated their time, creativity, and resources. The Creative Discovery Museum, they've been with us from day one. They inspired us and guided us as we um, built a program and a space with kid-friendly activities. The Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum, they're providing us with an authentic steam engine that was built in 1891, the same year that Erlanger was built. Rock City, they're giving us the resources to build a secret garden and tree house. The Chattanooga Fire Department, they have donated an actual fire truck cab. The Board of the International Towing Museum and Recovery Museum are building us an interactive tow truck and it's going to be pink for our girls. <laughs> and the Lookout Mountain Hang Gliding School is providing hang gliders for our beautiful lobby. So all these features will make this children's hospital at Erlanger truly unique and we can't thank our cultural partners enough for all their help and support. There's another group of individuals that need to be recognized. We certainly wouldn't be standing here today without the tireless efforts of our Believe campaign leadership. Two men stepped up to the plate early on to lead this team and oversee one of the biggest campaigns this city has ever seen. They invested their time, resources, and yes, reputation to make this campaign a success. So please help me in thanking and welcoming to the podium our Believe co-chairs, Tom Ed Wilson and Grady Williams. Thank you, Julie. When this Believe campaign was launched uh, <clears throat> well over a year ago now, we didn't have up-to-date donor lists uh, and we didn't have any large donors to call on. Now, after a lot of hard work by a very few dedicated, focused, and relentless individuals, more than 4,000 donors have contributed to Erlanger's Believe campaign. This has truly been a grassroots effort which is the best type to have when you're building a campaign. Even after cultivating all these donors, we still needed some key donors to step up. It goes without saying that $40 million is a big number. Then Olin and Butch Mills stepped up and agreed to commit their time and their leadership serving as our honorary chairs of the Believe Campaign and they became our first $1 million donor. What a boost. <laughs> what a boost this gave our campaign. Unfortunately, Olin and Butch are out of town today and not able to be in attendance, but we owe them a great deal. And then in a remarkably short time, other major donors, such as the Volunteer Auxiliary, city of Chattanooga and the Tucker Foundation have joined the mills with their own $1 million donations. And we also have an anonymous donor who has pledged $4 million of which $2 million has already been paid. That type of support is truly a game changer for every child, for every family, that will walk through the doors of this amazing new facility. The wonderful staff of the Erlanger Foundation and our volunteer leadership have worked together to create these results. My co-chair, Grady, will now introduce our key leadership team. Before I introduce the key leadership team, I'd like to introduce the, the entire team. If you worked on a committee under these uh, chairs of committees, uh, any auxiliary, would you please stand and let us recognize you? A lot of people here work tirelessly on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and we have a special presentation to the campaign, the Believe Campaign leadership team, and I need some help in doing that. So we have two of our miracle kids over here, Aiden Brown and Greer Cofield. Would y'all come and join Tom Ed over here and help him make a presentation to our leadership team? And our leadership team consisted of, uh, and when I call your name, would you please go over and Tom Ed and the kids will give you a shovel. Start with Jim Sattler. Jim Sattler headed up one of our kids. Jim, Jim, maybe let's hold our applause till the end because we're, you know, everybody's in a hurry. Allison <laughs> Labovitch was part of Jim's team and she's not here today. Early on, we had two young couples step up, and I almost got to emotional. Stepped up with their pledge, with their passion, with their their work ethic. I mean, they really put in a bunch of work on this campaign to help make it successful. Ashley and Ward Davenport and Amanda and Keith Jackson. Well, just for a Then Mark Ramsey. And Fred DeCosmo headed up a division. Fred is here. Tom Bible uh, worked with Fred. Rachel and Chris Welch. What a great job they, they did in our campaign. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Jack. And then Dr. Dave Bhattacharya. Dr. B, Dr. B12. Everything. Super help to us. Thank you so much, Dave. Let's give let's give them all now a round of applause. And has already been said a time or two, the campaign's not over. We're having groundbreaking, but we need another eight million dollars. So we'll be calling all of you, still trying to raise this other eight million dollars. We've got to get it done. We know we can get it done. People told us over and over, y'all can't raise that kind of money in Chattanooga. Well, we showed them, didn't we? Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for your support and leadership. Um, I'd now like to recognize the Hamilton County delegation and your leader, Mike Carter, if you guys could please stand. Um, Mike Carter, State Representative, District 29. Mike's a lifelong resident of Etowah, uh, who was first elected as State Representative to District 29 in 2012, re-elected in 2014, currently serves on the House Financial Ways Means Committee, the House Ethics Committee, and serves as Vice Chairman of the House Civil Justice Committee. We appreciate uh, Mike Carter's commitment to our community over the last two decades. Thank you. What an honor it is to be here today as chairman of our delegation. I would like to recognize our delegation. So Gerald McCormick, would you please stand? Joanne Favors, I saw Representative Favors. Patsy Hazelwood, I think Mark is out of town if I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Bo Watson and Todd Gardenhire. Why have I had them stand other than the positions they occupy? Because I want to explain to you that these are ordinary people. They're just ordinary people. But they gave themselves to service of their community. And it makes them extraordinary. So today, as we look forward to the grand things that are going to happen here, is it not appropriate that we stop for just a minute and reflect on the shoulders upon which we stand today? Because without ordinary people having gone before us years before, there would be nowhere to stand. So at some point, a gentleman, an ordinary gentleman named T.C. Thompson, decided that we needed a children's hospital. And so he did an extraordinary thing. Just an ordinary man who did an extraordinary thing. And look at the results. Would he not be ecstatic today to see that it go to a level that he could never have envisioned? That's our, that's our responsibility as those who have come behind. And at my age, I begin to look around. I see Matt Hollander that I taught in Sunday school many years ago. 
and I'm so delighted with the young folks that are coming behind because they will stand on our shoulders and others will stand on theirs. So what about our board members that we have the pleasure of appointing? Phil Smart, stand up please if you would. Linda Mines, Henry Haas, Gerald Webb. Not sure that Gerald's here, he may be in court. Uh, thank you so much. Likewise, these are ordinary people. They're just ordinary people who have volunteered their time to do an extraordinary thing. So in my book, they're truly extraordinary. Find a place to help and let's continue the project. Let's be the foundation that T.C. Thompson's built many years ago that we now stand on. Let's leave a foundation for others to stand on. I'll end with this. I was at a restaurant one night and someone said, have you heard the craziest thing that's going on yet? And I said, well, that's hard to narrow that down. <laughs> what is it? They're gonna build a new children's hospital. Can you believe that? They'll never get it done. They're gonna do it with contributions. I said, wow. Um, before I make a statement on that, who's raising the money? And the guy said, I think Grady Williamson. <laughs> and I said, do you know Grady Williamson? No, I really don't. I said, my money's on Grady. <laughs> so Grady, thank you for being an ordinary person, you and Tommy and all your committee who have done truly extraordinary things for our community to make the world better for all of us. Thank you. I think you took a smart bet betting on Grady. I'm also glad to hear Matt was in Sunday school. <laughs> so now I get the uh, opportunity to introduce our uh, city mayor, uh, Mayor Burke, before becoming first elected mayor of Chattanooga back in uh, 2013 and re-elected earlier this year. Mayor Andy Burke had already served on the state senate. Uh, first in 2017 and was re-elected in, uh, in 2007 was re-elected in 2008. Uh, it was really not until the uh, tragic bus accident of November 21st that I got to know Andy personally. Um, Andy showed up. He came here. He came here multiple times. He even called me on Thanksgiving and said, do you think somebody will let me in the hospital if I want to come visit? Andy, that's showing up. That's leadership. Thank you for what you do. Well, first, I need to start by saying I know what everybody's thinking, and it's, it's really, it's not the case. I am not the $4 million anonymous giver. <laughs> now, Coppinger, Coppinger, on the other hand, he cares a lot. So I'm not saying he is, but I'm also not saying he's not. Um, no, it's, it's fantastic that we have people who care so much about our community and the things. When Chattanooga does something, we do it big. We do it big, and this is, this is the case today. Part of the reason we do that is because we have great leadership and I want to start by recognizing phenomenal leaders in our community and that is members of our city council. If they would stand, Demetrius Coonrod, Anthony Bird, Erskine Oglesby, Darren Ledford, and Carol Burrs. Please give them a round of applause for their investment and time. There's nothing we won't do for our kids. At our most basic, the things that we care about is making sure kids are happy and healthy. My wife and I have two teenage daughters and I can't think of what we wouldn't give if something were to happen to them. And so every time something happens to a child in our community, I think our first response is, what if that was my kid? And we want to help. That's just at the basic, the part of humanity that's so important. And so on November 21st of last year, it's not surprising that we had such an outpouring of support when we saw tremendous harm and despair in our community. Six children killed, but also dozens who were injured. And the amount that our community came together to try to support those families and the people who, who were helping them was tremendous. Let me start by saying that the first people who responded on that scene are, many of them are here today, 
The first responders who work for the city of Chattanooga and the county, our police department, our firefighters, if they would stand and you give them a round of applause for the work that they've done. And then as I went through the hospital several times, what you could see is the dedication and the tremendous amount of effort that the staff poured into their work. And it went beyond that. It's truly love that they have for these kids, kids that they've never met before that day. But when they come into that, that room, these staff show true love. For those who work at, at T.C. Thompson at Children's, please stand and let us recognize you again for the work that you do for our city. So as a result of that, one of the things that was clear was that the city needed to make sure that those kids who came after that day were going to get the world-class treatment that Chattanooga kids deserve. We have a world-class city, we should have a world-class children's hospital. And part of that meant the city had to step up and so we are donating to the children's hospital, yes. But the other part, which I think Kim will talk to you about even more, is the way that you're going to see the infrastructure change in this entire area over the next few years to support the work that Erlanger does. Um, Third and Fourth Street will be changing. Central Avenue is coming before that to, to again, make this entire area different. And you're going to see the tremendous ways that it affects not only Erlanger, but UTC, residents of the city, CSAS, all these different entities who are at the table now trying to change our city. But at the core of that, at the core of that is gonna be the people who work and live in this area. And as always, the people of Chattanooga continue to inspire me. They surprise me every day with the generosity and courage that they have. November 21st of last year, obviously that was a day that we saw it, but we also see it each and every day in our city. And so on behalf of the city of Chattanooga, we want to thank Kevin and Don and the rest of the Orlinger team for their, for their leadership. But most of all, we want to thank you for your continuing work in making our city a world-class place to live. Thank you very much. I now have the honor of uh, introducing uh, Kim White from River City. Kim uh, White is a Chattanooga native who moved away uh, more than 20 years ago. She was amazed by all the improvements that were taking place here in Chattanooga while she was gone. We're so glad you came back home uh, because of the, over the past several years, Kim White has led the River City Company and is responsible for many of the improvements you guys see downtown. With that, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what an exciting day this is, not only for Erlanger, but for the whole Chattanooga community. And what started out as Erlanger's bold vision has turned into a catalyst for a shared bold vision of change. For the past year and a half, River City Company has been meeting with Erlanger officials and stakeholders along this corridor. Our partners have included UTC, Unum, Siskin Rehab, Blood Assurance, the city, the county, philanthropic foundations, along with many others. And what's come out of those meetings is a vision for a transformation of 3rd and 4th Street. A vision that brings new retail and residential development. Transforming an area now just filled with cars passing through to one that will be filled with people, living and working and part of a community. Those new developments bring with them improved safety and connectivity with new sidewalks and street connections like the Central Avenue connection that Mayor Burke talked about and parking facilities along with these much needed services. It's a vision of connecting neighborhoods, the hospital, the university, and downtown. Erlanger's vision has become a catalyst, not only for a transformed hospital, but a catalyst for a transformed community. And today we celebrate an amazing achievement and a bold first step. But it's only that. It's a first step with much more to come. Thank you to the Erlanger team for dreaming big dreams and then working to make them a reality and we look forward to being your partner in the transformation. Thank you.
So now it is my honor to introduce uh, my partner in this journey, uh, Chief Medical Officer at Children's Hospital at Erlanger, Dr. Alan Court, who is also the professor and chair of the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Tennessee College of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Court's a general pediatrician with a special interest in children with chronic, uh, chronic conditions. Uh, he's got a big interest in quality improvement and patient safety. Uh, and it was his first conversation with our present CEO, Kevin Spiegel, that sparked this uh, notion and this vision of having a new children's hospital. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Dr. Alan Court. Whoa. What a wonderful day. Um, as I walked over I could and started talking to people, I could just feel this energy rise and just how exciting it is to see this becoming a reality. And in 18 months, there will be a new building over there and we will be dedicating that new building. <laughs> Children's Hospital is blessed to have an incredible staff of caregivers providing the highest level of medical care for your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, the kids who live next door to you. And today I want to convey to each of you the profound sense of appreciation that our staff has for everything you all have done. The respiratory therapists, the ward clerks, the nurses, the medical assistants, the techs, the PSRs, the therapists, environmental services, child life, the family advisory council, dietary, the nurse practitioners, and the physicians. And I'm sure I've left a lot of people out. But we all want to say thank you for this new outpatient building and in the very near future, a new children's hospital. I also want to convey to each of you the deep sense of appreciation from our patients and families. This is gonna change the game for them. They will be moving into a new, open, playful environment that will make their visits more positive, less stressful, and help them heal. When I came here almost nine years ago, I communicated to the board that we needed a new children's hospital, right Donnie? But it wasn't until just over four years ago when Kevin came and brought his team and when Kevin made it his vision that he, his team, and the board have made it a reality. Thank you, Kevin. I also want to convey a deep sense of appreciation for the foundation. When Julie Taylor came to the foundation, uh, I don't know what your staff was, but maybe three people, four people, it was pretty small. And there was no culture of philanthropy at Erlanger. So in the short time that she has had to raise this much money and put together such an incredible team, Julie, you have done a fantastic job. And where is Bruce? You stand in the back of the room, but it was Bruce who made and had the ability to pull it all together. He had the connections, he knew the people, the folks from HKS, the folks from McCarthy, he brought us all together. And it was really what Bruce did. And the amount of work he has done, what he has given to make this happen is absolutely amazing. I also want to thank the Mills, Grady and Tom Ed. Uh, it's been wonderful working with you, the Believe leadership, the volunteers, and all the staff from the foundation. We now have a culture of philanthropy that we did not have and we can only build from where we are today. I also want to express a deep sense of appreciation for each of you and what you have given to us. Your gifts of time, ideas, your leadership, 
your money. And speaking of that, as you've already heard, we do need to raise a few more dollars, so I just want to throw that plug in. <laughs> this new facility is a clear message to the children and families of Chattanooga, of Hamilton County, and of the region. And it is a clear message to the staff of Children's that we, as a community, value our children. And that we value those who provide the care for them. And that we will do whatever is necessary to provide the best care possible and to have the best little children's hospital in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Court. Kids, are you ready for this thing to be over? <laughs> I thought so. Well, it's not over. We've got to raise another $8 million. So we're going to stay here until... No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so today is a historic day, and it really marks the beginning of a new pediatric delivery system for this entire region. Um, we are building on the history of many that have walked before us, of the doctors, the nurses, the administrators, um, of Dr. Masood. Um, my little brother's going to laugh. I'm going there. We're going to talk about a quote from Gandhi. So uh, you guys know the quote from Gandhi. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. But a community is judged by the way it treats its children and its, adult, and its elderly. Today, Chattanooga stepped up. We are treating our children with respect. Uh, I'm proud to be part of this community. Thank you for all that each and every one of you have done. With that, we are going to end the formal part of this ceremony. So kids, we are just about over. Please join us for snacks, for uh, photo opportunities. Um, while we make our way to the groundbreaking area over here where we are going to break some ground, we're going to be serenaded by the Chattanooga Boys Choir. They're going to sing a couple of additional songs. So please enjoy the music uh, as we break up into our, our picture groups. And once again, thank you so much for showing up. Thank you so much for believing. And uh, thank you so much for each one of you and what you have done. Thank you.